I think the universe is absolutely and utterly giving. I've never seen anybody dedicate themselves to something completely and fail. I've never seen somebody eat right, go to the gym every day, train really hard, and not be in good shape. I've literally never seen it. The universe is extremely giving. If you actually try, and you actually want it, and you're actually not making excuses, lying, talking shit, you're gonna get what you want. So when I see people who don't have what they want, I consider them losers. And this may be elitist, I understand that. But if I put myself through endless pain to end up where I am, it's very hard for me to have sympathy on the man who's afraid of pain. You're avoiding pain. I've been through endless. I now have everything I've ever desired. You have none of the things you desire. Am I supposed to feel sorry for you? Because you took the easy way out? Am I supposed to look at you and go, oh, poor dude? No, you were a fucking coward. You didn't go through the shit I went through. You didn't put it on the line. So you deserve your substandard reality. That's what you deserve, you're a fucking loser. Because if you actually wanted it, and you actually tried, you'd have it. You could have anything you want. Universe is super giving. You want a fucking Ferrari, you can have it. You want that bitch, you can have her. You can have anything you want on the planet. There's not a girl I look at that I want that I can't have. Not one. That's my reality. There's not a car I can't have, there's not a house I can't buy. If I want to go to a yacht, if I want to go to Antarctica, if I want, there's nothing I can't have, at a bam. Because I've decided to become this man. It's the same for absolutely every single one of you at home. If you want it, you can have it. If, you, if you're sitting there saying, oh, but I tried my best and I still didn't get it. You're lying. You didn't try your best. That is a fucking lie. The universe gives it to everybody who genuinely tries. And I know that to be a fact because this world's competitive. We're all competing against each other. And the majority of people don't try. Like I've, I've achieved this amazing life and I've tried very, very hard, but it could have been harder. I mean, was it that hard? About 86% hard. It wasn't 100% hard. Why? Because the competition's zero. Everyone is a fucking loser. It's amazing to me. Everyone's a loser. I can say to somebody, listen, I'll make you a millionaire. Do this. Oh, yeah, but you know, the kids are home from school now. <laughs> That's it. They're done. And then they'll sit and go, oh, I really wish I had some money. You are a loser. I will sit here on this podcast. People will listen to me for hours. And I will say, listen, I have hundreds of millions of dollars and I will teach you how to make money. CobraTake.com, I have a school, university designed specifically to teach you how to make money. I clearly know how to make money. You clearly like what I say. You obviously believe I'm intelligent and integral and I won't lie to you. And still, a whole bunch of people will sit there and go, hmm, yeah, anyway, next video. And then they'll say, can't afford a Ferrari and wonder why. Like they'll be confused in their minds how they didn't end up getting what they want. Because you're a fucking loser. Lo that's why. And, and the majority of people are losers. And this is goes back to why, when we were saying earlier, how I know the elites view us. Because I'm from a council estate in Luton, a single parent household. And I've only been rich 10 years or so. And I despise losers. So imagine you're a billionaire born into a family, a lineage which has controlled Earth for hundreds of years. Imagine how much they despise us. Do you think they give a fuck about putting a bullet in me? Do you think they're gonna have any sleep at night missed? Do you think they give a solitary fuck about you missing your fucking parents' funeral because of the common cold? They don't give a solitary shit. Why would they? Because I already know how I feel when I listen to losers complain. Because this is what happens at a certain level of competence and power. You just get to a point where you're like, I'm tired of hearing your fucking excuses. That's bullshit. And you become to a degree, yeah, cold and psychopathic. It's true. That's what happens. And I get it all the time. I get thousands of emails a day. Everyone I grew up with, people I know, I get it all the time. They'll message me, hey man, you know, just unlucky. You are not unlucky. You are a lazy fucking loser. That's, that's you are not unlucky. You are breathing. You're lucky. The unlucky ones are gone. You're alive and you are a lazy loser. So a loser is anybody who does not have everything they want at the drop of a hat. That's who I call a loser. Because I have absolutely everything I could ever possibly desire. And if I wanted something that I couldn't have, I guarantee you, you can speak again in a few months and I'm fucking happy. I guarantee you. Because if I want something and I can't have it, I can't sleep. When I was broke, I couldn't sleep. I don't know how there's broke people out here sleeping just fine at night. Going, oh, you know, inflation's 
gas prices are six times, everything on the news is a lie, I never stand a chance of ever getting rich, where's my pillow? Like, what the, f what the fuck is wrong with you people? I, I go to bed at night as a teenager and think, I looked it up on the internet. It was a Honda Civic Type R. I wanted one, it was like 38,000 pounds. I had no money, I had less than 50 pounds on my bank account, couldn't afford it. Then I looked up how much a Ferrari cost, 210,000 pounds. And I said to Tristan, my cup brother, I was like, there are people with 210,000 pounds for a car. And he's like, yes, so? I'm like, no, no, not so. How? If I worked my job for six years, and saved every penny. If I walked to work and didn't eat, I couldn't buy this car. How are people doing this? I couldn't sleep at night when I was broke. I knew that everything was a lie. I knew the matrix was lying to me. I knew I had to find a way out. I was sitting there going, I refuse to live my human years and be some second class citizen peasant when there's people out here who get to do whatever the fuck they want. I, I couldn't tolerate it. And I was so uncomfortable that it gave me the motivation I needed to escape. But the people who go, oh yeah, nice Ferrari, yeah. Back to the TV. Dummies, losers. And the thing about the world is, we need losers. I, I'm not mad at losers. If that's the reality you've chosen to live, you get one spin in this version of life, and you decide you want to be a loser, that's fantastic, because I like, I need, my cars need cleaning, you know? My hotel room needs cleaning. I have a party with all these beautiful women that's a bit of a mess. Please, go pick it up. Somebody needs to do that shit. I ain't gonna fucking do it. If I had to walk into a hotel room and clean up after some other man's party, I guarantee you I'd do whatever it fucking took to become rich so I didn't have to do that shit anymore. But you wanna do that for 20 years? Thanks, friend. <laughs> Someone's gotta flip the fucking burgers. Someone has to make the fries. I want a happy meal now and again. But I don't feel sorry for you people because you fucking deserve it. Because it's a decision you made. You made that decision. If you're sitting at home and you say, I don't want to be a loser, you know what to do. I told you how to escape the matrix. CobraKitTape.com. You can join. I'll teach you. But if you're going to sit there and go, nah, maybe this guy with hundreds of millions of dollars is trying to scam me out of 25 pounds. All right, smart ass. Have fun at McDonald's. Get fucked. I have no sympathy for these people. Zero. Do you have a little bit of a system you can share on how to make money i know we've got cobratate.com we'll yeah. keep shouting it out but any tips for someone who's ready yeah but they don't yet know the how completely so we teach it inside of the real world of course i keep mentioning it because it's so important but there are three keys i believe to making money the word of the day first one's perspicacity most people go through life and they do not pay attention I've said this before and I want to stick by it because it's so important. You need to pay attention to every single time you spend money because you cannot make money. You're not the Federal Reserve, you're not a government. Governments make money. All of us take money from somebody else or a business or a government. We take money from other things. So the easiest way to learn how to get good at taking money is to pay attention to every time someone takes money from you. So next time you buy a coffee, don't just buy the coffee and drink it and think nothing of it, like every brokey. Don't do that. Say, okay, I, why am I buying this coffee? Okay, I want the coffee. All right, why am, I, why am I buying here? Well, this is on my way to work. Is there any competition around? Do I also want breakfast? Do they sell breakfast? No, they don't sell breakfast. They can probably make some more money if they're selling breakfast. Anyway, I walk in, there's a long line. Why is there one member of staff? I'm low on time. I'm about to leave and not buy the coffee. They're about to lose money because it's taking too long. Most of the people in this line are businessmen. Why is there not a cute girl behind the counter? I bet if they paid a cute girl a little bit more, they'd still make a bunch more money because people come in here to talk to her. Think. And then you, what you'll do is, as you go through life, every time you spend money, is you'll realize the problem is not how to make money. The problem is how much time you have because there's endless business ideas. There's endless ideas. I walk into a coffee shop and by the time I've walked out, I already know exactly how to open up next door and outcompete them head to toe. I already have worked out how much is the rent, how, where are they fucking up, what are they not selling that they should be selling? What are they doing good? What are they doing bad? This chair is too hard. I'll wreck them. And I'll send it. And now my network is so powerful, which is the second point network, I can send a few messages on WhatsApp and make a bank transfer. And two months later, there's a brand new coffee shop next door with my name on it, put them out, put them out of business. So the first thing is you have to pay attention. Because if you pay attention, you'll start to learn that money is everywhere. Every building is owned. These are skyscrapers. Billion, 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 billions. Every apartment nowadays is a million. 
million, million. You drive down a street in London, you're driving past trillions of dollars. There's money everywhere. It's all around us. When I was broke, I thought that the world was broke. I thought that there was no money. And then I got rich and realized that I was completely and utterly wrong. There's so much money. It's everywhere. If I go to try and buy a plane or a jet, they're always sold out. My yacht is a fucking six year waiting list. I want a Bugatti, they launch it, the email comes to my email address, two minutes later, gone. Like there's so much money. If I want a diamond watch or a million dollar watch or a million dollar Rolex, you can't get this stuff. There is so much money out there. Once you get to a certain echelon, you realize there's money fucking everywhere. So there's plenty of money in the world. People with no money are just not very good at taking it. So you need to start paying attention. It's the first thing. Second thing is network. It's hard to make money if you don't know anybody who has money. If you sit in a room full of ice cream experts and all they talk about is ice cream, how to make ice cream, the different flavors, how to store it, how to move it, how to sell it. Even by accident, if you hang around with these people long enough, when someone asks you a question about ice cream, that's what you're gonna, you're gonna know the answer. You're gonna say, you know what? That's because it's pistachio and that needs to be two degrees higher than chocolate. And you're gonna look like a smart ass. So if you sit in a room full of people who are making a bunch of money, Everyone understands this. Your network is your network. You're the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. Everybody understands this. And then they still hang around with fucking losers. Because they're dummies. You're right. I am the sum of the five people I spend the most time with. Anyway, this is my friend Nick. He's so funny when we go drinking because he gets really drunk. <laughs> losers. I don't talk to anybody who is not winning. Everybody whose phone, uh, every phone call I will answer, if I answer a phone call, it is from a winner. I don't talk to losers. Everyone I talk to is rich. Everyone I talk to is making money. Everybody. If my entire reality is full of multimillionaires making money, how am I not gonna make money? And this is why network is so important is because it's the same reason that wolves hunt in packs. If you're a lone animal, you have one set of eyes. But if you're a pack, you're watching every single angle, every single side. Perhaps I might miss something. I'm as perspicacious as possible. But one of my friends identifies that the war in Ukraine is gonna change and the Russian ruble is gonna pump. You can make a bunch of money on a forex trade, for example. I may not have noticed, but he'll notice. Now I've made a bunch of million dollars to get a text message, right? Hmm. Because I have friends who are paying attention. All of us are paying attention. So your network is super important, that's another thing. We'll go into this, because I have something called The War Room, which is also on corporatetech.com, i let people read for themselves. But that's my private network, and we specifically talk about money, and, and a few other things. But that's is that like more like a mastermind? It's it's the real world's how to make money and the war room's what to do with money, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's all on corporate.com. I don't want to get off track, but it's there. But second is network. And third is to identify the reason why you don't have as much money as you want so far. And there's one of three reasons. You are either lazy, stupid, or arrogant. Those are the only three reasons anyone is poor. And you have to identify and choose which one it is. The majority of people are not the one they think they are. The majority of people are the one I'm about to say at the end. So let's start with lazy. There are a lot of lazy people. The unfortunate reality about money is that you are competing. So it's player versus player. It's like anything in the world. If you want that beautiful girl, so does everyone else. You have to win the competition. You want that car, you have to get it first. You want that money, everyone wants that money. You have to compete. It's competitive, business is competitive. You are competing against people like me. You're competing against people like the people in my network. You're competing about people who only talk about money, who understand money very well, who operate in jurisdictions all around the planet, who are extremely well connected, who know things before you know them, who have mass influence and mass power and mass resource. You're competing against me. This is what you must understand. You're not waking up going, I want to make some money. You're competing against people like me. You're competing against billionaires. You're competing against hedge funds. How do these hedge funds keep growing? Where are they getting that money from? From the brokies. They're robbing you. They're robbing all the poor people from the pension fund, dummy. That's where they get it from. This is who you're competing against. So the competition is absolutely and utterly fierce. Understanding that, understanding that you're a man with a small pistol up against a mighty army. If you want to add a little bit of laziness on top, you're fucked. So when I say people are lazy, they go, I'm not lazy. I work hard every day. You work eight hours a day? You work eight, eight? The fuck? If I'm awake, I'm working. I'll be driving my Bugatti Chiron through Dubai, working. I'm texting at the same fucking time. I don't take a second off. I don't take a minute off. 
I don't relax, I don't rest, I don't stop, I don't chill, none, ever. I'm either asleep or at work, that's it. Second I wake up, I check my phone, I begin working. I go to the gym in between sets, I am working. I'm online working the entire fucking day until the second I go to sleep, I am at work. That is all I do. And you are at home competing against me and you want to watch a movie tonight and then say you're not lazy. You're fucking lazy and you're gonna lose forever. That's laziness. Next is stupid. I don't think many people are actually too stupid to be rich. You can be below average IQ and still get very rich. Very, a very small percentage of people are too dumb to be rich. The slave minds, they'll never be rich because the matrix tries to keep you poor because when you're poor, you can't think like we talked about earlier. So everything the media tells you is designed to make you poor. They want you broke and struggling because if you rely on the government for food stamps, then you can't argue with the government, can you? So that's what they want. So anyone who believes in the matrix and believes in media and believes in the lies they're told, anyone who sits there and goes, that's true, that it's literally designed to make you broke. That's why it's all a scam. Do your GCSEs, do your A-levels, get in debt, go to uni, get out, get a shit job, get a mortgage. Don't worry, when you've paid that mortgage off when you're 61, then you'll have enough money to go to Spain for holiday. Then your pension comes. Oh, government doesn't have the pension money anymore. Funny enough, hedge fund stole it. Pay half your money in your life in tax. Oops, de doops. <laughs> and then you wake up one day and go, whoa, I just got fucked. So the whole scam, the whole story is a lie because they want you broke. <laughs> they don't want you rich. If you're rich, you won't listen to them. So all of it's a fucking lie. And intrinsically, we all know this, right? If I, when I pull up in one of my 30 cars to a gas station and people look at me and they see a Lambo or a Ferrari or a Bugatti or a Koenigsegg, whatever I'm driving, nobody goes, wow, he went to school. No, they think drug dealer, gangster. They're thinking, they're thinking he broke the rules because anyone who follows the rules doesn't get shit. It's all a scam, it's all a fucking lie. So the slave minds are fucked, but those are the only ones who are too stupid to make money. Anybody who understands that the matrix is lying to them is smart enough. So very few, very small percent are too stupid. Inside of our school, at the height of it, before the matrix attack, we're relaunching now, we had 175,000 students. Wow. When we had 175,000 students, maybe 2,000 we kicked out for being too stupid. It's step by step. Do this, do that, do this, and don't be lazy. The fuck, it's not that hard, right? So stupid's not the problem. So we have people who are lazy, very few are stupid, but the majority, the main reason most people are broke is because they are arrogant. I will sit here and say all the things I've said. I will do this, take time out of my life for free. Somebody at home will watch and digest it for free. They will agree with the things that are being said or at least be entertained enough to continue to watch. And then I'll say, I'll teach you how to make money online. CobraTape.com, you can join the real world. And they'll sit there and go, nah, I'll do it myself. They're arrogant. They have these egos from fuck knows where because they didn't earn it. And they're just too arrogant to listen to anybody. I became world champion by listening to my coach. I didn't become world champion by walking in and saying, I'll do it myself. <laughs> That's not how you get anywhere in life. You have to listen. If, if Mike Tyson were to walk in, or if Elon Musk were to walk in here and talk to me about money, I wouldn't be sitting there going, I can do that. I'd be like, oh, Mr. Elon, richest man in the world. Hello, very nice to meet you. Please, even though I already understand I don't want to launch a car brand or put rockets in space, please, you must know some things I don't know. How do you deal with the currency fluctuations? Does it does, does inflation impact how much it costs for you to send a rocket into space? Like, I'll ask him something that's useful, right? But so, some people are so brutally arrogant that they'll sit here and they'll listen to all the things I said, and they'll agree that I'm intelligent, and they'll agree I'm massively successful, but they'll sit there and go, yeah, but you know what? I'll, I'll do it myself. I don't want to join that school because you know, I'll, just do, I'll do it myself. They're arrogant. Everybody's fucking arrogant. I sit with people who I used to go to school with from Luton who are still broke and tell them how to make money. And you know what they do? They answer back. Yeah, but you know, it's not that simple because you know, the wife gets the kid, da, 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 and you know what, and I, I don't like to do things that way, the way I like to work. The way you like to work is why you're fucking broke. So what the fuck are you talking about? You just sat here and wasted 10 minutes of my time. I told you how to take your business, or painting and decorating, or whatever the fuck you're doing, and make a serious amount of money, and now you're telling me the way you like to work? Then stay fucking broke. The fuck you want me to do? What level of arrogance? But this is people. 
They'll sit with a multimillionaire and tell you their view. Oh, I think that the... Know when you're out qualified and accept it and learn. So we all do. I'm not gonna get, I can't play piano for shit. The piano teacher walked in here and said, this is what you do and I said, well, I like to move my hands this way. What kind of dumbass? But this is the, this is the arrogance people operate under. So I'd say 20% of people are lazy, 20 to 25%. A large portion of the world are not lazy. They're actually working exceptionally hard, but they're doing the wrong thing. 5% of people are too stupid. So say 25%, 5% is 30%. But 70% of people are brutally arrogant. And this is why they are poor. That's the truth. Living this great life, you're doing everything you're supposed to do, but deep inside, when you look in the mirror at night, you know you are sad. And you are sad because your soul hurts. Because you need God. When God becomes your ally, the no moral man is worth fear or even respect. I will destroy any moral man on the planet. I fear one person, and that is God alone. So God just broke your heart on purpose to show you that the way you're living your life and the man you are simply are not good enough. What have you changed since? You need to get up and work so hard that even in the eyes of God, he is proud of you. God loves his creations, which show him their true potential and beauty by getting up and trying your absolute best and becoming a man of, of moral standing. He will reward you and bless you. You are wasting your energy. Heartbreak is unlimited motivation. If I was heartbroken, I'd be in the gym every morning. I'd be a beast. I'd be running. I'd be working. I couldn't sleep. I'd be an absolute animal. I became me through tedious, arduous, difficult, never-ending work. You're failing God. If you were the best version of yourself and you were waking up every day trying your absolute best to be a unique and special individual, then you would not be failing God any longer and he would not plague you with this bad luck. And you need to become a formidable force of man that cannot be replaced or replicated anywhere else on God's green earth. That's what you must do. This is going to repeat endlessly. It's a cycle that will not fucking change until you take the message from God and become the man you're supposed to be. If you wake up each day and go, I don't owe anybody anything, I don't have to prove anything to anybody, then you are a loser because you are absolutely not the incorrect. You must prove yourself to other people. You must prove yourself to God. God hates the lazy. He can't stand them. If he gives you all these genetic dispositions and these natural God-given gifts, if you have two arms and two legs and you can think and you're not trying your absolute best, that's the reason you're not lucky. He doesn't like you. He likes the people which show him the beauty of his own creation. He likes to give somebody building blocks and then to build something amazing. It's the best thing about being a man, you get to build who you are, right? You can decide if you want to be a funny comedian or a musician or a kickboxing world champion or fight the matrix. You can decide whatever you want to be. I've never seen anybody dedicate themselves to something completely and fail. I've never seen somebody eat right, go to the gym every day, train really hard and not be in good shape. I've literally never seen it. The universe is extremely giving. If you actually try and you actually want it and you're actually not making excuses, lying, talking shit, you're going to get what you want. So when I see people who don't have what they want, I consider them losers. And this may be elitist. I understand that. But if I put myself through endless pain to end up where I am, it's very hard for me to have sympathy on the man who's afraid of pain. You're avoiding pain. I've been through endless. I now have everything I've ever desired. You have none of the things you desire. Am I supposed to feel sorry for you? Because you took the easy way out. Am I supposed to look at you and go, oh, poor dude? No, you were a fucking coward. You didn't go through the shit I went through. You didn't put it on the line. So you deserve your substandard reality. Because if you actually wanted it and you actually tried, you'd have it. You could have anything you want. Universe is super giving. There's not a car I can't have. There's not a house I can't buy. If I want to go to a yacht, if I want to go to Antarctica, if I want, there's nothing I can't have, at a bam. Because I've decided to become this man. It's the same for absolutely every single one of you at home. If you want it, you can have it. If, you, if you're sitting there saying, oh, but I tried my best and I still didn't get it. You're lying. You didn't try your best. That is a fucking lie. The universe gives it to everybody who genuinely tries. And I know that to be a fact because this world's competitive. We're all competing against each other. And the majority of people don't try. The world is hyper competitive. If you're going to be a man who's going to sit and say, I'm just sad, you are always going to lose in competition to men like me.
No. And there has to be losers for there to be winners. I am tired of sympathy. Sympathy doesn't work for anybody. I'm not going to sit here and be sympathetic for people who say they're too sad to try hard and be their best. Guess what? Perhaps I was sad every time I did exactly what I was supposed to do and trained anyway. Perhaps I was afraid when I fought anyway. Perhaps I was tired when I worked anyway. This is how you get ahead in life. I don't have a fucking ounce of sympathy for these people who sit here and say, well, I feel this way, so I can't. Then don't do it. Stay down there. The winners are at the top, and the winners at the top don't give a shit about how they feel. We wake up and we perform regardless of how we feel, day after day. So if I'm going to ignore my own feelings, I'm certainly not going to take into consideration anybody else's. Yeah. Why am I going to ignore how I feel and make sure I'm constantly performing regardless, flawlessly, and then sit and go, oh, but he doesn't feel good, so he's allowed to fuck up. No, you are not. You're not allowed to fuck up to your ancestors or to God or to yourself. You have to perform. This is how it, this is what being a man is about. The baseline of masculinity is doing things you don't feel like doing. I can't comment on being a woman because I'm not one. But the baseline of masculinity as a whole is the thing that makes a good man a man is that he does what he doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to work and he works anyway. He doesn't want to go to war and he fights anyway. He doesn't want to get up. He gets up anyway. That's the whole point of it. We didn't want to die in the Titanic. Guess what happened? We died in the Titanic. You can't sit there as a man and say you don't feel like it. You're not allowed to not feel like it. You're supposed to do it anyway, regardless. Yeah. So when a man sits there and says, oh, but you don't understand, I'm struggling with motivation. If you are struggling with the motivation to be a winner, then stay a fucking loser. No problem. Stay yeah. a loser. Don't care. Because in my circle, there's no losers around me. Your energy is disgusting. I find it revolting. I don't like weakness around me, even near me. Even people coming up saying hello to me. If you're depressed, don't even shake my hand. I do not have time for losers on any regard. Winners only. If you're the person who wakes up, does work, is fantastic at it, and then takes three days off, you're going to lose. They say that hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And it's completely true. You have to be consistent. You have to decide. Are you the kind of person who wants to make a lot of money in this life and live a life of freedom? Or are you the kind of person who wants to look back when he's 30 on his 20s or 40 on his 30s and look at that decade and go, what did I do with that decade? Well, I didn't get rich. I didn't travel the world and live like they do and take confidential. What did I do? Well, I had a day off here, a day off there, a bunch of nothing days that amalgamate into this decade of nothingness. And you're just wasting your time. If you want to win, you need to be consistent. You don't need to be the smartest, not at all, but you have to be the guy who's there day after day. And I guarantee you, I will guarantee you right now, IQ has nothing to do with how successful you'll be as a person. What is gonna determine how successful you're gonna be is, are you there every single day? Are you doing what you're supposed to do day after day? I can also apply this to sales. I knew guys who were terrible on the phone. Back in my day on sales, you start to call companies. I was smooth, I was the best. We had some other guys who were smooth, they'd land a deal, go buy a nice car, whatever, take a few days off, take it easy. We had people who were terrible. When I say terrible, I mean they had a thick Indian accent, didn't speak English that well, didn't know the script that well, didn't know the answers, but they were always in the top 20% of the company because they just hammered the phone. They just were on it. They needed to feed their family in Bangladesh. They didn't give a fuck. They were just calling. That's it, day after day. When you're on lunch break, he's on the phone. You can win with hard work alone. And that's what's amazing about the universe when I say that. God will give you anything you truly want. If you truly want money and you truly try hard, you truly listen to us, you are going to have as much money as you could possibly ever desire. But if you think you want money, but you kind of want something else, or if you're arrogant, or if you're lazy, you're going to end up somewhere in the middle if you're lucky and talented. And if you're not talented, you're going to end up in the middle. So you don't want to be a normal dude, because when you're a normal dude, you're a loser. You don't get to do amazing things. What's interesting is none of you have had a normal life. You've had a unique and individual life path. The things you've gone through, nobody else on the planet has gone through. You've lived certain experiences, the school you went to, the time you were picked on in that class, the girl who broke your heart. Every single thing you've been through is unique, like a fingerprint, a completely unique life. And somehow you've managed to stay completely non-unique. It's almost impressive how you can have a completely unique life experience and still end up average. How the fuck did you do that? Your life's different than everyone else's and you still look and talk and sound and act like everybody else. Like a dummy. That happened because you have not paid enough attention into analyzing your life. Self-analysis. Every single time something good happened to you, every single time bad, something bad happened to you, you've not spent enough human hours sitting and thinking and trying to work out why it happened how to make sure the good things happen more often, how to make sure the bad things happen less, less often. What was God trying to teach you? 
You're trying to teach you something. You think, oh, I just got scared. No. God sent you a lesson, but you didn't pay any attention to it. Do you understand? Everything that's happened to you has been sent from God himself to guide you on a unique path. Everything good and everything bad. And the point of the unique path is that you end up a unique person. But you are failing. God is unhappy with you because you're not trying hard enough. God hates the lazy. God wants people who try. You understand? You know what I can't stand when I hear Christians say, if it was the Lord's will, I would have had some money by now. No, 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 you can't dump that on God. He said faith without works is dead. I'm just asking you, man, to try something new. Now, if that ain't what you want to do, then good luck. You keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. I would try something else if I was y'all. Look at somebody and say, it'll work if you work it. Work it. I started my church with seven people in a building cooking ribs and chicken to pay the rent. When they were calling me the boy pastor and they were making fun of me and said I would never be nothing. I worked a job and I preached on the side and I put my check in the offering to keep the doors open and whatever we had left, we cooked up and sold dinners to get another month to fight again. We preach with our lights off. We preach with our water off to get to where we are right now. And I came to tell you today, whatever it is you are trying to build, if you won't sacrifice for it, if you won't be hungry for it, if you won't sweat for it, if you won't bury your pride and put in the work for it, you don't have the right to get it until you will stay up at night and go to school while other people are watching the game and read and work and pray to get to be whoever it is you are trying to be. You have not got the right. You need guts. You can't be this without guts. I preached a year and a half in an empty room. Forget about my dream. What is your dream? What is your goal? And how much what will you put into it in order to get what you're trying to get from God? How much? It will only work if you work it. If this message spoke to you as a man, you can either cower down and give up and let your wife become your mama or you can stand up like a grown man and handle your business get out of your feelings people will not work for emotional people who have meltdowns and freak out and hold grudges you have to be bigger than that we don't have time to deal with your attitudes so stop popping your neck hold your head up get yourself together and get ready to fight the good fight of faith i've been wondering why it didn't happen i didn't realize i had to serve to lead nobody ever taught me how much it costs greatness is expensive succession is expensive this does not work like your phone this does not work like an app you have to work it and it doesn't happen overnight for most people Yes, there are one or two people, but out of millions of people, those are only one or two. The rest of us have to work it. It will work if you work. Every discouraged person, every person who's been feeling like it's just not working, it's just not working. This was your message. If I never preach again, this was your message. It will work if you work it. You think you can wish your way up. You cannot wish your way up. It'll work if you work it. Remember these words. It will work if you work it. I rebuke every giving up spirit. I rebuke every quitting spirit. I rebuke every spirit of forlornment. I rebuke every spirit of frustration. The devil is a lie. He's trying to talk you out of your future and tell you you cannot do what God called you to do. 
the dreams God has placed in your heart are not going to come to pass without opposition, without delays. There will be plenty of opportunities to get discouraged, think that it's not meant to be. If you give up after the first time or the 30th time, what that really means is you didn't want it bad enough. There should be something you're believing for that you are relentless. Your attitude is, if I have to believe my whole life, I'm not going to stop believing. I'm not going to settle for mediocrity. I'm going to keep pursuing what God put in my heart. Normal people would give up, but you're not normal. You want it on another level. How bad do you want what God has put in your heart? Bad enough to do the right thing when the wrong thing is happening? Do you want it bad enough to keep pursuing even when circumstances say it's not going to happen? If you're overcome by problems, you let circumstances push you down, people talk you out of it, you're not going to have the strength to sustain where God is taking you. You have to be more determined than the opposition. If you give up every time things don't go your way, you didn't want it bad enough. Are you letting people talk you out of what God put in your heart? You can't get well. You saw the report. You can't start that business. Let that go in one ear and out the other. Ignore what they're saying. If you're going to see what you're believing for, you have to be willing to do what other people won't do. Other people may not believe when it looks impossible. They may get discouraged, tell you, don't bother praying. No use getting your hopes up. You're wasting your time. Say, God, this looks impossible, but I know you can do the impossible. The odds are against me, but God, I know you are for me. Well, I dated two girls. Both of them told me I wasn't their type. I don't think I'll ever get married. You don't want it bad enough. There are several million other girls out there. How bad do you want to get out of debt? Bad enough to not buy things you can't afford? Bad enough to honor God by tithing your income? How bad do you want that promotion? Bad enough to get to work early? Bad enough to take that online course to sharpen your skills? How bad do you want your children to stay on the right course? We don't think twice about having to get our children up for school. Their schooling is incredibly important. But I could argue that their spiritual life is even more important. <laughs> Learning to honor God, as a person of excellence and integrity, those seeds planted in them will affect them for the rest of their lives. How bad do you want your marriage, your relationships to work out? Bad enough to clean up a mess that you didn't make? There are new levels in front of us, but much of it depends on how bad we want it. You can pray, God, help me to feel better. God, I'm always so tired. Are you eating right? Are you exercising? Are you living stressed and worried? Then God will do what you're asking. But you can't override natural laws and expect to live a blessed, healthy life. When he sees you doing all you can, then he'll make things happen that you can't. Now do your part and distinguish yourself. Be willing to do what others won't do. Yes, it takes discipline. But the pain of discipline is less than the pain of regret. It's hard to lay off the junk food, things that are not good for you. That pain is less than the pain of not being healthy. One of the saddest things is to come to the end of life and wonder what I could have become. What if I would have broken away from those friends that were causing me to compromise? Where would I be? What if I would have taken that step of faith in my career and not played it safe all the time? You don't have to wonder. You can start right now. The question is, do you want it bad enough? Make this decision. I am not going to live complacent, passive. I'm going to pursue what God put in my heart. The difference between a dream and a wish is a wish is something you just hope it happens but a dream you put actions behind. Faith without works is dead. Wishing isn't going to get you anywhere. 
And the people that succeed don't always have the most talent, the most opportunity. Many times they simply want it more than others. I always knew it was a trick and a con. I didn't truly understand things to the level I understand them now. But I had an intrinsic understanding, and I think everybody does. If you're, if you're in a gas station, and it's three in the morning, and, and a Lambo pulls up, and a guy gets out of it, you're thinking criminal, drug dealer, gangster. Yeah. You're not thinking, ah, he has a uni degree. Because you you know, you're not gonna think that. So when you see money, people don't even associate the money they see with university. But then they go, I wanna make money so I'm in a university. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. So be a slave, be a slave, be a slave. Every single government in the world is interested in control. That's all they've ever wanted. That's all they ever want more of. Governments want control. They wanna control their populace. They think of us as sheep. We're cattle to them. They want us to comply. They don't want our individuality. They don't want us to think for ourselves. They want us to just sit there and obey like robots. So every single one of them is slowly inching day by day, pushing the limits, taking as much control as they can from the people to the people revolt. Mm -hmm. And if they do it slowly and incrementally, they get away with a lot. This is beyond money. The, the people in charge of the world print the money. They don't care about, about money. They don't care about economies. They don't care about taxes. All these things are brokey cons considerations. When you print the money, do you think you give a shit if the economy is good or bad? You print the money. You don't care. What you care about is when you click your fingers, do people obey you? When I talk about the matrix, I'm talking about the systems which have been created by society, which are deliberately designed to enslave. In the movie, the matrix were used for our body heat, but here in, in this matrix were used for our efforts and our energies. And you're existing inside of a system which is deliberately rigged to make the rich richer and for the poor to stay poor. Yeah. And for you can sit there and get upset about it. You can sit there and cry about it and say the system needs to change, which is what some people do, socialists, X, Y, Z. But I think that's not I think. I know. That's a waste of time, right? That's futile. The best thing to do is to understand the rules of the game and find a way to win. So yes, the game is rigged. Yes, the rich are always going to get richer. Yes, the poor are always going to struggle. And that's the way the game is set up. So you still need to find the best move on the chessboard. There's no point sitting there saying, I want to play a different game because that's never going to happen. Because the people with the money are the people who have the control and they have the power. And why would they have the game set up any other way? Why would they change? One of the largest things that hold people back from wealth is the people around them not only because of the mindsets of the people around them, but also trying to find people around you who you can truly actually trust is difficult. I always was always close with my brother because, and he's always been close with me because we are a team and you need to have a team. And if you have a team, you stand a better chance. It's player versus player out here, man. It's on the street. It's not easy for every dollar you make, for every pound you take, you took it from someone else. You don't make money, you take money. People don't understand the way that money works. You're not the Federal Reserve. You can't create money from thin air. Every single pound in your bank is money you took from someone else. And I'm not, when I say take, I don't mean it in a negative way. You might have convinced them to give it to you. You might have a coffee shop. I'll give you a nice coffee. You'll give me some money. Cool. But you still took his money, yeah. right? It's the true nature of the universe. You have to learn that you, you have to take things from other people. And by taking it, I'm not saying go rob a bank. I'm not saying that. I'm saying comp completely the opposite. You can be a philanthropist. I'm taking money from everyone inside of hate you, but I'm changing their lives. It's a good thing. You can take money in a positive way. Most people don't look at the light, look at life that way. And when you look at life that way, you need to start identifying. One of the things we teach inside of hate you is to identify every single time your money is taken from you. So I say this to people. I say for the next two weeks, every time you spend money, even if it's a pound, write down how they got it from. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, all right, cool. You're walking down the street. You're going to Starbucks to buy a coffee. Why did they take your money? Well, I wanted coffee. Yeah, but how? Okay, you wanted coffee, right? Cool. Did you only want a coffee because you saw Starbucks or did you want a coffee beforehand? Why did you want their coffee and not another coffee? Did you buy a cake as well? Why did you buy a cake? All right, cool. So now you identified how they took your money. Then realize how they could have took more of your money. You bought a cake, but you didn't buy a sandwich. Why? The sandwiches weren't on display. Or they looked cold. Or they looked rubbish. Or the woman who was serving me was old and ugly. Maybe she was a young cutie and talked to me about bologna sandwiches or a bomb. Right? So you need to start identifying how your money is taken from you. Mm. Because once you identify how your money is taken from you, you can start to actually intelligently think about how you can take money from other people. If I had to open a, uh, a coffee shop, if I, if I sit in a coffee shop, right? If I sit in Starbucks, the whole time I'm in there, not only am I thinking about how they got the money from me and how much I spent, I'm thinking about how I could outcompete them. I'd sit there and go, okay, cool. I'm in Starbucks. I spent £5.68. I got a latte. I got a donut. And I'm sitting here. And that business place, that, that, that commercial property right across the street is available for this. How could I outcompete this coffee shop which just took my money? 
What's the profit margin on this five pound sixty eight? How much did this cost them? Coffee, pennies, donut, thirty p minute, mm -hmm. right? How much is the staff? They pay the staff minimum wage eight pound an hour. So I've already paid half. I've already paid thirty minutes work for that wage. She's there for another thirty minutes for free, right? How much is the rent? How much is the business rates? If I had to open up there, how would I attract people to come into my shop as opposed to their shop? They got a big brand name. I'm brand new. Okay, well, the bitch working here is ugly. My one's going to be hot. Boom, that's the beginning. Next thing, do they have any signage outside? No, I'm going to try and put some signage outside. Do they have parking? No, I need parking. But you need to start thinking about how you can convince people to give you their money as opposed to giving it to the places they already give it. And, and once you do that, people say, I can't think of how to make money. If you start doing that for a year and just keep a notepad, you'll have a hundred ideas of how to make money. You'll sit there and go, there's a place here that's doing this, and we could do it better this way. This place online is doing this, we can do it better this way. And then, and then to get them all done, what do you need? Network. You need people. It's all about people. I always knew that even when I was fighting, and I was always trying to find a way to make money. Even when I was fighting, all I did was try different ways to make money. I tried a, I tried a million things, and that's what you have to do. You have to try a bunch of things and learn a bunch of lessons until you finally find something that works. The problem is as well, it's difficult because the way that humans work and the way that we are, we've evolved as a species is that we don't really learn lessons unless they're learned the hard way. Yeah. I believe that unless a lesson is taught the hard way, you're not going to learn. You can have so many near misses and people won't learn their lesson. Bro, you must know a guy who goes out there, nearly crashes his car, nearly crashes his car, nearly crashes his car, doesn't slow his ass down till he wrecks it. Yeah. Like, this is how people are, right? So you need that pain for the lesson to sting enough to really genuinely go inside of your mind. And it's the same with everything. It's the same with driving a car or business. Truthfully, if you want to learn a lesson about business, you're going to have to suffer at some point, right? Mm. So we always say that most people are not successful with their first companies, X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. I get that. The truth is there's a lot of people who make a lot of money with their first company, but they just spunk it, act an idiot, and it all blows up in their face. And that's, the, and that's how you get the discipline on your fourth company that when you have three million in the bank, you just leave it there. You know, it's yeah. and don't and don't be dumb with it. So you need to you need to go through some pain. You need to experience some negative things. You need to have to a, to a degree some trauma to really even learn any lessons. So, yeah, business studies. You're right. The book that's that's not going to teach you anything about business. You need to get out there on the streets. You need to you need to make mistakes. You need to suffer. You need to have the tax man knocking at your door. You got to deal with all that stuff so that you make sure it doesn't happen again. I really think that, that humans are stupid enough to only learn the hard way. That's kind of how it works. I, I am absolutely and utterly a believer in hard work. I'm a proponent of hard work. I have all this money and all I do is work. My entire life is work. This podcast is work. I'm getting in the car and going to another meeting. Work. I want to go to the gym so I'm in good shape. Work. It's all work. My entire life is work. And people don't want to look at life that way. They want to talk about work-life balance and being lazy and all this crap. I don't believe in any of that. I believe in if you want to win, you have to outcompete the man who's prepared to do nothing but work. It's player versus player. If you're going to sit there and go, I don't want to work more than an hour a day, well, the guy who does want to work more than an hour a day is going to beat you. And no matter how smart you are, there's always a smart dude who's doing the same smart work you are for more hours than you're doing it. You don't notice if you're talented at something until all the hard work's done. Yep. I could be the most talented tennis player in the world, but I don't play tennis. So if I go down the tennis court, Joe Schmo is going to smoke me. I don't get to see my talent until I've worked so hard that I'm in the top 1% and now I'm beating them because I have some God-given gift. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to do the hard work first. If there's no hard work, there's no smart work. So someone's going to sit there and go, I work smart, I don't work hard, so I only have to work an hour a day. If working smart gets you a lot done in an hour a day, then you should work smart for 12 hours a day and yeah. get 12 times the work done. The traditional, the traditional path to wealth is terrible advice. They'll go to university, get a degree, get a job, blah, blah, blah. That's terrible advice. We already know that. We talked about that. I think follow your passion is also a ter terrible piece of advice. Yeah. Yeah. They, people say, hey, man, you need to find your, what you're passionate about and do that. And what they're trying to say is only do what you like because you have no motivation to do anything else. And motivation in, in and of itself is a scam. I don't believe in motivation. I believe in discipline. I am not motivated to do the things I'm supposed to do every day. I don't wake up full of like joy that I have to go to the gym or that I have to work or I got to deal with crap. I don't feel motivated to do them. I'm disciplined. I do them regardless of how I feel. Whether I'm in the mood to do it or I'm not in the mood to do it, it gets done. That's discipline. Discipline's a real thing. Motivation is fleeting. Yeah. You're never going to be permanently motivated. So when someone comes along and says, oh, do what you're passionate about, what they're saying is you'll have endless motivation and then you'll be able to try hard. If you're the kind of person who can only try hard at something he enjoys, then you're going to fail because most things you enjoy don't pay any money. If they paid money, you wouldn't enjoy them. It's called a job, 
right? Nobody likes their job. You like your hobby. I'm sure you like playing video games. Maybe 1%, 0.1% can make money from video games, right? Most people, you ain't ever going to make it. Yeah. Do you think the guy in China who owns a concrete plant is passionate about concrete? Do you think he's sitting there stroking it at night, <laughs> naked in bed? It's money. Be passionate about success. If you're passionate about money, then you can be passionate about anything. I'll be passionate about any business on earth that pays me. If you pay me a billion dollars to dig that hole, I'll be very passionate about that hole. I, I obviously know what I'm talking about to some degree, right? So if, if, if Mike Tyson walks in here and tells you he's going to teach you how to box and says you can't fight, you're a pussy. If that upsets you, then you can't learn, right? It's Mike Tyson. Just shut up and listen. <laughs> if, if, if someone richer than me comes along and says, Andrew, you don't know shit. You're a dumbass and you're a brokey. I'm going to sit there and go, okay, maybe I am a brokey, Elon. Tell me something. Right? I'll listen, but if you're going to sit there and go, don't call me names, and then I'm not listening, you're never going to get anywhere, right? You don't, become, you don't become the master unless you're very, very good at being a student. And I've always been very, very good at knowing when to shut up. Oh, a lot of people with no money are, are, are really, really arrogant. I know a lot of broke people who are very arrogant. And their arrogance is a shield for their laziness. People will, people will shield laziness with anything. No one wants to admit they're lazy. So they'll shield it with disbelief. Ah, oh, that's a scam. Or, I don't work hard, I work smart. Bollocks, more, more cover. Quitters are the worst people on the planet. You can give a quitter absolutely everything and they will still fail. Quitters can have every single advantage. Quitters can have all the information. Quitters can have all the tutelage. Quitters can have a, a mentorship. Quitters can have someone who messages them every morning. Hey bro, let's get it. And guess what they're gonna do at the end? Quit. Quit, <laughs> they ain't never gonna have shit. So if you're a quitter, I don't even want you in, even inside my organization. I don't want quitters anywhere near me because you're never gonna be successful. Right? You need the people who don't quit. I don't quit. Every single facet of my life is testament to the fact that I don't quit. When people see my plane in the sky, you can, you can say whatever you want about me. You can call me arrogant. You can call me anything you want, but you cannot call me a quitter. I didn't quit. So that's the difference. When it was hard, I did it anyway. That's who I've always been. And if you don't have that kind of tenacity, you're never going to be anything. So look, everyone loves passive money, right? I make money as I sleep. I get it. You, you need to de-link your time to your money because if you're only working for money, you run out of time, you can't make enough money. I understand all those principles. My point is, if you have no money and you're coming to me saying, I want to make passive income, why are you not making active income? Get up off your ass and work first because there's no such thing as completely, truly 100% passive. You're going to have to check on it. You're going to have to maintain it. You're going to have to find a new tenant for that property. You're going to have to make sure that DeFi crypto farm you're in doesn't go to zero. It's not a rug pull. Yeah. You're always going to have to keep an eye on it, right? But the idea that people with no money are already so concerned with making money without work is amazing to me. You should be worried about active income. If you show me, if I'm a brokey and you show me how to make $1,000 an hour, I don't sit there and go, okay, but how can I make that passive? I go, cool, I'm making $18,000 a day because I'm going to work. You don't need to worry about passive income until you have no more time. I look at passive income because I have 18 hours a day I work. When all 18 of those hours are done and my workload still isn't finished, I have to find a way to make some of those income streams passive, either via staff or whatever else. Yeah. And that's how I work smart. I use all of my time and when all my time is done, yeah, now I have to become more efficient yeah. so that I can get more done within the same time frame. To sit there and say, I don't want to use my time so I want passive income is dumb ass, is dumb shit. The 16 year old making 45 grand a month. If he was to sit to me and go, I don't want to make the TikToks, I want someone else to do it, make it passive, that he wouldn't make any money. He's just working. You have to just work. At some point you have to bite the bullet and just work. So when someone comes to me talking about passive income and they're broken, like, you are just lazy. You are lazy. You'll never get anywhere. Lazy people never get anywhere in life, doesn't matter what it is, no matter if it's tennis or money. If you're lazy, you're never gonna get there. To the normies. To the brokies, they're not ready to listen to it. Yeah. The Matrix, they say in the movie, people who are still dependent on the system will fight to defend the system. There are people who I will sit there and say to them, look, your university degree is a scam. They lied to you. I will show you how to make money. And their reply will be, no, I went to a good university. They are desperate. No, that degree means something. You work in Greg's, G. Doesn't mean any, shut up. They, don't, they won't accept it, right? So, so certain people are not ready for the truth. People who are ready for the truth seek it and they find it. 